Phantom. The Phantom was in its prime during the Vietnam War. And as Mike Victor reports, the men and their flying machines who fought together in Vietnam are still serving together in Kansas. The sight, the sound, the impression of sheer power. The Phantom has traveled hundreds of millions of miles around the world in the cause of freedom, and they are still taking off. This F-4 squadron belongs to the Kansas Air National Guard at McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita. The 184th Tactical Fighter Group is the largest F-4 training squadron in the country, preparing pilots for the services worldwide. In its golden years, the Phantom is still considered a proud ship by those who held her controls in wartime. Sammy Small teamed up with his F-4 for over 400 missions. Could do just about any mission. There have been other airplanes developed specifically for a specific mission that uh, probably did the mission better than the F-4, but that was the only mission they had and likewise uh, limited their versatility. The F-4 could be used in just about any any air, air-to-air, air-to-ground, uh, nuclear, uh, interceptor. Steve Blanchard saw his share of action through the Phantom's windshield and still enjoys every flight. It almost becomes like a second skin that you just put on like a just an everyday type of fare. You're, it's a love affair. Uh, the airplane is uh, just tremendous in every, every respect. But there is a new kid on the block, the F-16 Fighting Falcon, an ultra-modern fighter designed to serve into the next century. The F-4 is slowly being phased out due to age. However, it has served years beyond expected and overcame early criticism that it would not hold up in the heat of battle. It took a SAM, an S-2 SAM missile in the right side of the aircraft just about that the trailing edge of the fusel of the wing where the fuselage and the wing mate together and it buried that missile in the side of the airplane and he flew back with it in it. For 25 years, the distinctive roar of the F-4 Phantom has been heard around the world. According to Webster, the word Phantom means elusive. The men who served in Vietnam say the plane was that and much more. For many North Vietnamese MiG pilots, the sight of the big Phantom meant a very bad day. Crewmen called this aircraft Red Star or Jim or Dual MiG Killer. Model number 0271 is credited with the verified kills of two MiG-21s. There are other models which wear four or five stars and dozens with one. The Phantoms down more MiGs than any other weapon, but they did not always escape. I actually witnessed uh, four different F-4s blowing up in, in midair due to either ground fire, uh, surface air missiles, um, two of them that MiGs shot down, uh, and watching people that I trained with or flew with every day uh, after eject out of out of the middle of a fireball. Um, and I can see those in my mind as plain as they happened yesterday. But today, the mission is different and equally important, training the best pilots in the world. This squadron flies over 13,000 sorties per year, many of them to the Smoky Hills Range, 90 miles to the north. There, they engage in controlled combat in the air and on the ground. Smoky Hills, step one, one. It gives pilots experience in bombing runs on a simulated Soviet airport, complete with planes and motor convoys. It's impossible to predict how you're going to react. We go out on a day-to-day -day basis and do our best in training to create a scenario that will give people some realism and make them think about the kinds of things they'll have to think about in combat. The range control officer gives clearance to fire and also scores the hits. The return flight is an opportunity to practice mid-flight refueling, a necessity since the Phantom has a hungry appetite, emptying its tanks in just a few hours. Continued practice makes man and machine operate as one. When I first got in the F-4, I was really excited being a young fighter pilot, and I was just uh, very overwhelmed by the power of the F-4 for, for the age that it was and its capabilities. And its capabilities are still fairly viable even in today's world. 
Uh, it has a very capable platform and can still do a lot of things that it was designed to do. My father was the F-4 test pilot at the time, and I think my first time I had an experience with the F-4, I was about five years old, and I witnessed a flyby that was very impressionable, you might say. Uh, it scared the heck out of me, if I remember. In her 10 years working the F-4 line, Lisa Yui has become fond of the craft. It's like a child almost. You become accustomed to it, you, you learn it, it becomes a part of you, and you look forward to coming in and working on them and learning more that there is to learn. And after 10 years, it's, it's kind of a shame to think that they'll soon be leaving. You gonna miss them? I will, definitely miss them. For one more year, the F-4 will carry on its full-time training mission here before it roars into the sunset. I think the pilots who grew up in the airplane, meaning those that flew it in, in combat in Southeast Asia, kind of hate to see it go. You know, some of the airplanes we have are, uh, are older than some of the young pilots that we have coming to fly them. Uh, and it's, uh, it's time, I think, to put those airplanes to rest. Uh, and as we go through the airplanes, we find structural cracks and... Uh, and, and start to find some, some problems with the structure of the airplane just because they're old and tired. When the F-4 is gone, so is the job of the Wizzo, weapon safety officer in the back seat. New fighters require only one man on board. The computers are taking the place of uh, what was once done by the Wizzo, that is uh, operating the radar, uh, tilt and gain, finding targets and, uh, and locking on those targets. These airplanes can do it uh, a lot quicker and, and in most cases more accurately than, uh, than what was once done in the F-4 manually. In the Air National Guard, uh, what we've tried to do is, uh, is take a lot of these fellows, uh, if they meet the age requirements, and send them back to pilot training, bring them back and, uh, and qualify them in the F-16. We've uh, we found that, that if we take a backseater and send them back through pilot training, that they usually do very well. The Guard is changing here, but the mission of the Jayhawks will be continued in F-16s. Since many of those who work here are part-time soldiers, McConnell has an exceptionally close tie to the community. That if we get involved in the community and participate in the blood drives and participate in the uh, Special Olympics and uh, participate in, in the River Festival and all the other things we participate in and get with the civic organizations, we also because we're involved, get the support of the community to do the things that we need to do in the Kansas Air National Guard. The public is often invited to tour the base. Even these preschoolers have an appreciation for the plane they soon will only see in museums. I learned a lot from them, and they're a lot of loud. These airplanes are making loud noise. Do you like them? Yeah. Without it, we, you could forget it. We wouldn't be here. This is, this is what being in America is all about. We have to have the people that are here, the aircraft. The F-4 Phantom joins some rather distinguished company here in Wichita, called the Air Capital of the World for more than 80 years. Legends include such names as Cessna, Beach, Lear, Earhart, and even the most famous aviator of all times, called this home. Charles Lindbergh flew out of here uh, many, many times. Uh, he, uh, in fact, McConnell Air Force Base used to be the, the air terminal for Wichita, Kansas, and the air terminal building, which is still uh, here at McConnell, and we're currently trying to turn into an air museum uh, was a site that, uh, that Charles Lindbergh operated out of when he, when he ran a, a freight service here. These skies have seen aviation history unfold from the Wright brothers days to the era of the B-1 bomber. But until next spring, the star veteran on the tarmac and in the clouds is the F-4 Phantom. Well, what I'm looking forward to doing and, uh, and talking with the boss here is that uh, I've had an airplane with my name on it since uh, I first got here to McConnell, and uh, my plans are hopefully this next year and uh, the early spring when it's time for that airplane to go to its final resting place out in Arizona, that I'm going to fly it out there, retire it, and come back and retire me. It's, uh, it's been a great airplane. It's an old friend. It's an airplane that's delivered many of us in the unit to combat and back, and, and uh, even though we're looking forward to the new technology and the new airplanes, uh, we certainly are going to miss the old F-4.
in Wichita, Mike Victor reporting for Veterans Only.